Pruitt and palpate are uh, dorsal and anterior structures of the foot and lower leg. Uh, first we're going to start off here with the uh, just anterior to our lateral malleolus is going to be our uh, sinus tarsi. And this is a kind of looks like a depression in the uh, forefoot. And then we also, that's also the site for attachment for the extensor uh, digitorum brevis muscle. Uh, then we also have our uh, the dome of the talus. Uh, this is uh, posterior and uh, lateral to the uh, navicular bone. And that is also a, uh, if we ask the patient to um, invert and uh, plantar flex the foot, uh, it makes it a little bit easier to uh, palpate. Uh, then we have our uh, three cuneiform bones. Again, these are um, at the after the base of our uh, metatarsal bones. Here's our first uh, cuneiform bone. Here's our second cuneiform bone. Uh, and here's our third cuneiform bone. Um, and then we also have our uh, uh, tibial shaft. Okay, which again, we have our tibia and then our uh, fibula on the lateral side. And then we also have um, five metatarsal bones right here. Our first metatarsal, second metatarsal, third metatarsal, fourth and fifth metatarsal. And then we also have our uh, phalanges. Uh, here's our proximal phalange and distal phalange. On the rest of our digits, we have three phalanges. We have a proximal phalanx, a middle phalanx, and a distal phalanx for the second toe, third toe, fourth toe, and fifth toe, proximal, middle, distal. We also have joints in here. We have interphalangeal joints, just interphalangeal joint here between our uh, proximal and distal phalanx of the great toe. Uh, for the rest of our toes, we have uh, two interphalangeal joints. One is going to be our proximal interphalangeal joint. And then between the middle and the distal phalanx is going to be our uh, uh, distal interphalangeal joints uh, for each of uh, those four digits. And then we also have our uh, soft tissue. So, uh, for this one, um, uh, for the tibialis anterior muscle, um, we're going to ask the uh, patient to uh, dorsiflex and uh, invert the foot. Um, and you should see that uh, down here in the front. You can palpate that. And then we also have our um, extensor hollicis longus tendon. So uh, this goes to our uh, great toe. Uh, we can palpate that up there. Um, then we have our extensor digitorum muscle, which attaches to our uh, four uh, digits. So if we ask them to pull up on that against resistance, we can see those uh, tendons there on the top of the foot. And then we have our um, peroneus tertius muscle or tendon uh, which may not uh, be present in some populations so um, for this one uh, we can palpate this tendon uh, where it crosses the anterior and the lateral malleolus over here on uh, this part so if we were to ask the patient to uh, ever and uh, dorsiflex the foot uh, we might be able to uh, see that uh, tendon uh, and then we have the extensor retinaculum um, down here by the uh, between the fibula and tibula tibia bone on the distal tib fib and then we also have our um, dorsal uh, pedal artery uh, here on the top of the foot 
uh, we palpate with our two fingers. Uh, that lies between the extensor holicus longus and our extensor digitorum uh, tendons. And that um, may be involved uh, with the uh, anterior compartment syndrome. So we're going to do the palpation for the plantar and posterior structures of the foot and lower leg. Uh, first we're going to start off with our bony structures. Uh, down here, uh, uh, right on our uh, great toe, we have uh, two sesamoid bones. Um, right around the, the head of the uh, uh, first metatarsal bone. Uh, and those two sesamoid bones follow along the longitudinal arch from the medial tubercle of the calcaneus uh, on the and first to uh, metatarsal phalangeal joint. Uh, this bone also, these bones also lie uh, deep within the uh, hallucis uh, brevis tendon and they function to provide a mechanical advantage for the flexor tendon, uh, especially when you're uh, towing off. Um, next we have our uh, metatarsal uh, heads. So this is going to be our first metatarsal head, our second metatarsal head, third metatarsal head, fourth metatarsal head, and fifth metatarsal head. And then we have the dome of uh, the callus. Here's our callus bone back here. And the dome of that is going to be the uh, posterior third of the dome is located behind the, the ankle joint. And it moves uh, inferior uh, along the walls of the calcaneus uh, for fractures. Uh, then uh, lastly we have a uh, medial calcaneal tubercle. Uh, again this is going to be um, over here and this is where we have a uh, the heel of the pad begins uh, to thin or merge into the medial longitudinal arch right here um, and then it moves along the medial ridge uh, and, and applies uh, pressure upward or towards the calcaneus. Uh, this is also an attachment for the medial plantar surface of the calcaneus uh, as well as attachments for the abductor hallucis uh, medially, the flexor digitorum brevis and the plantar fascia uh, anteriorly. And then for soft tissue we have our uh, plantar fascia right here in the bot in the center and that originates on the medial tuberosity of the calcaneus uh, and inserts uh, near the metatarsal arch. And then we have our uh, Achilles tendon which runs right here uh, and that will attach to the gastrocnemius and the soleus muscle uh, up by the knee joint. And then we have our uh, two bursa uh, uh, right at the base of our tendon near. Uh, we have our retrocalcaneus bursa. This is going to lie uh, between the anterior uh, Achilles tendon and the posterior superior angle of the calcaneus. And then we have the calcaneal bursa and this lies between the insertion of the Achilles tendon over the overlying skin so that's going to be more superficial.